welcome to At the Table with Ori Zabas. Today we're going to discuss how food is not only important for nutritional value and the ability to build a healthy lifestyle, but also its cultural and traditional importance. Dr. Joanne McMillan gave a TED Talk on this exact topic. Take a look. Because food is more than the nutrients that it contains. Food is part of who we are. Food is part of our culture. It's part of our upbringing. It's part of how we negotiate and interact with each other. Just think about those of you in the room with a partner. What did you do on your first dates? I'm willing to bet that you went for dinner at some point. What do we do when we're celebrating? Apart from popping open the champagne, we probably have some celebratory cake or we have some food. What do we do at Christmas and New Year? What do we do at funerals? Food is always involved. I've traveled to some pretty remote places in the world, and it's the same everywhere you go, whether you're in the most modern, urbanized city, or whether you're in some village in the middle of Africa somewhere. People want to share food with you. The sharing of food is a sense of friendship, a, French, a sense of who we are as human beings. So tell us about your mole. Mole, well, uh, as you know, uh, I'm from Mexico, and the, the region that I am from, like for weddings, mole. Like everybody makes mole. It's so a what tradition. Is mole? It's a uh, sauce made with guajillo chile, uh, pasilla chiles, and I mean, there's a lot of varieties of mole, but those are the, the ones that we use, like where I'm from. And, and chicken. Like they cook the chicken and then they uh, make the, the salsa for the mole, a lot of spices. Do you make that at your Christmas party? Here? No. No? No, no. That was, that was a different one. That was barbacoa. Yeah. Julie, did the mole have the whole pieces of chicken in it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And traditionally, we use the whole chicken. It tastes better. Not in, you don't want to use just thighs tie, and legs or just the breast, you have to use the whole chicken. So you like butcher the whole chicken mm -hmm. in pieces and yes. put it in? Okay. You butcher the chicken? Yeah. You know how to butcher a chicken? Yes, I <laughs> That was <just> savage. <laughs> I don't know that anymore. <laughs> but yeah. We'll get you a rubber chicken. <laughs> so you just want to <laughs> see me butcher a chicken. <laughs> I just want to see you wield a knife. So I think that's what's going on. So <laughs> yeah, and it was like a tradition because you know it's salsa, it's a red salsa, so you get dirty, so the the bride has to get like some mole on her. So it's like a it's no wedding if you don't get mole on it. Oh, on the wedding dress? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just you know that's what I do. We, we're accustomed to. Like that's how I do it. So. Do all parts of Mexico make mole, or is it different in different regions? It's different in different regions. Yeah, like on the north of Mexico, um, Barbacoa or Viria, that's the tradition. Especially uh, some parts, they make it from beef, and also it's very popular to make it from goat. That's like a delicacy. Really? Yes. I don't think I've ever had goat. Have you had goat? Have you had lamb? I've never had goat. <laughs> I've never I, had I, lamb. I think I've had it lamb. Tastes, it tastes similar. I think I've tasted okay. like lamb chops or something. They put, don't they put mint jelly on it? I don't know. Not a fan of, of lamb, but I, I've, I've tasted it and I think it tastes similar. I have had, I've had some good lamb and some really bad lamb. <laughs> yeah, I've had some really good ones. Yeah, and also, I mean... Like wrapped in bacon. <laughs> Yeah. I, Anything wrapped in bacon is good. They, they <laughs> wrap Oreos in bacon. <laughs> Do they really? Yeah. That's an oh god. I mean, I would try it. Don't get me wrong. Maybe we'll, we'll have to start wrapping our brownies in bacon. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe put well, some bacon sprinkles on them. Some bacon sprinkles. Oh, like bacon. Uh, that, did you ever have that bacon ice cream? So how about, how, how does your family incorporate? Do you guys have lots of food at family traditions and I have a I have a very small family so growing up it was just my mom my brother and my sister it was just the three of us uh, now my brother and sister have kids and I have kids and we've expanded a little bit but there's there's no cousins that come over there's no grandparents that come over you know it's, it's just the three of us so food has kind of really been what kind of keeps us together and keeps us from separating from each other, mm -hmm. you know, at, during the holidays. If somebody calls and says, you know, I, I'm making a ham or I'm making this or I'm making that. But, you know, um, 
it, it really kind of is the binder for my family. So we do, we barbecue a lot. We, we do a lot of like full spread, like way too much food on the table kind of meals and, and family get togethers and yeah, foods, foods a huge part of our life. Definitely. I know you and Alex have both talked about one day wanting to have your own restaurant, mm -hmm. your own recipes and mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I've, I've been in the kitchen cooking on my own since I was 10. I've been making family meals since I was, since I was 10 years old, just popped open a recipe book one day, hoping that all the ingredients were in the house and. You know, the first meal that I made was was honey chicken for the family, and it came out so good that I was just so excited, you know, that that I did this right and it went well and that everybody was so happy and 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 that I just it just kind of took off from there. I've just been cooking ever since, and and I just I, it's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. We went to own a restaurant. My mom used to hate that I love my my parents were divorced, so I grew up. My mom was a single mom, but my my great grandma, she cooked. You'd go over, and every single person got their own meal. So there was like always like this massive amount of food at the table. And then my grandma, she always made dinner. Like that's how you got people over to visit. Was you made dinner, and then my mom made dinner. She she worked a lot because she's a single mom. But Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, those were the nights that we had family time, and she made dinner. She made sure she didn't work those evenings, so she could have a sit down at the table meal. And so I grew up loving food, like the love of food is a way of expressing love of family. Um, but I like to try things outside of the border. So I would like, my mom would be at work or whatever, it'd be the summer. So, you know, I was watching, I was the oldest, so I'd be watching my brother and sister and they were probably playing outside. And I'd get out the pots and pans and I'd like start making stuff. I didn't use recipes. I just was like, oh, ketchup, that might go with this. Oh. Sweet pickles, that might go with this. <laughs> I was making, uh, there was a place that had ranch burgers, and I thought that was ranch dressing mixed, like marinated on the hamburger, rather than ranch, like a ranch with animals. Mm -hmm. So I used to make hamburgers and marinate them in ranch dressing and <laughs> cook them for my brother and sister. <laughs> How did they like those? Did they, they ate them. They yeah, they were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how bad could they that be? You know, ranch with burger. Yeah, yeah not gonna go like I need to try this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. DJ, you have ground beef today. You have ranch. Let's do this. I need to register a trademark that. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. But uh, no, even you know, funeral like our funerals, we would get together and we get the recipes of the person. Like if my grand great grandma when she died, like. Now it's like, who remembers which item of hers um, that she made? Who knows how to make that? And everyone kind of has their own thing because it was their favorite. And they learned it because of that. And so now we all get together. Um, we'll each make, like one of my things, my great grandma used to make these molasses um, Christmas cookies. And there's pineapple filling in the middle of them. And the cookie is a molasses cookie. And she frosted them. And then she put these silver balls on top of them. It was so hard. I mean, it would hurt your teeth, and I loved it because it reminded me of her. But they hurt your teeth. You can't find them anymore, but I'm one of the only ones in my family that makes them. So at Christmas time, the, I'll get the call like, hey, can you make Grandma Apple's cookies? Because mm -hmm. that's how we keep our past ones still with us. Yeah, we do the same thing at my house. Um, on our loved one's birthday, we make their favorite meal. So yesterday was my grandfather's birthday. He passed 18 years ago. So we make this big you know, big fried chicken batch or big like steak and asparagus batch or something like that. And it's kind of, that's how we keep our loved ones alive too, with food, definitely. Well, uh, speaking of funerals, like in, where I'm from in most parts of Mexico, when somebody dies, uh, we have the services at home. There's no funeral homes and stuff like that. And people come, you know, to accompany the family. And we have to feed that people at the funeral. Like they're there, you know, usually if somebody dies, let's say today, they're, you know, they're overnight and then get buried tomorrow. We have to give them dinner and then breakfast. To the deceased person? To the people that come to the house. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> they don't need it. They don't need it anymore. <laughs> what a waste. What a waste of food. <laughs> we did that for the 
for the Dia de los Muertos. Remember we were like, oh, I don't know, that's not a good idea. Without the stuff that they liked. And... I'm learning about skin <laughs> culture. <Yeah. laughs> I'm from the north, I'm from Montana. <laughs> yeah, and I know that seems like very bizarre for some people. Like, so people go to your house because somebody died and you have to feed them up. Like, yes, that's that's what we do. So make, make this a little bit clearer for me. So who died? Let's say who are you feeding? Mm, the people that come to the funeral. Whose funeral? Or how, what relation to you? It well, it doesn't matter, you know. If um, let's but say if it's your house, uh, you have to make the food. Yes, got it. Yes, okay. yeah. And I, it, obviously, it's, it's a small community, so everybody comes from everywhere. Because everybody knows everybody. So you know, sometimes they have to butcher the cows. <laughs> 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 you know when people like in my family in my town back home if someone died like all your neighbors all of like the person who's the immediate family doesn't cook but everybody else does and so you end up at your house with a non-stop open door of people just bringing in food and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't fit in your fridge, it doesn't fit on your counters, it's like this right. madhouse of food, which is great at the beginning because you're like, oh man, this is cool, I got all kinds of food. <laughs> no, and then it's like two days in, you're like, sit, you're, you're like, it was great, it was nice, it yeah. was wonderful, but it's a lot of food. <laughs> you can only eat so much. You guys ever played games? With your food in your family, do you have a family games or traditions that's fun with food? Like any holiday you have a food bite or? No, we see food like this thing that you don't play with. Hmm. Like you have to eat your food and like whatever is served to you, you have to eat that. Like we didn't grow up like, oh, I don't want that. I want chicken nuggets instead. It's like, no, this is what it is. And mm -hmm. You have to eat it. It's, it was not like, if you want to eat it, it's like, you eat it. Exactly. You that's, don't get down until you're done. Yeah. That's how it was when I was growing up, and that's how it is for my kids now. Again, this is my great-grandma used to do this. She'd make you a birthday cake, and then she'd take coins and wash them in, like, Dawn soap or something. And then before she'd frost in the cake, she'd put them in so they were standing up and push them into the cake. So that the kid, it was the kid's cake. So when they cut it, the kids would have money in their cake. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's, so painful. That's so painful. Did anybody did anybody ever buy into one? Uh, no, no I mean because people knew, so looking you're you're look you're like tearing your cake apart. It's kinda you know, it's a game who's gonna make the most money. Hmm. You don't eat a lot of the cake? Oh some people do. But I mean you're wanting more cake because you want money, not because you're gonna eat it. I right. think the, as far as we go with that is the rosca de reyes, you know, they put the little little babies. The baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just to see who's I gonna make tamales next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what they get the baby in their cake? They... You have to make tamales for for everybody. Okay, uh, so on the second. Day? Uh second of uh February. Es el día de la candelaria. Is that when they make the tamales? Mm -hmm. And then, but New Year's is when they put the babies in. No, it's a uh, uh, January sixth. Okay. Gotcha. Why the sixth? It's el, el Día de los Reyes. It's when the the three kings came to offer stuff to to baby <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the three wise men. Yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I was thinking. Well, um, Amber and Julie and I decided to have a little bit of fun with some food and a game. And we went down to a local drag show here in Las Vegas with some of our spiciest Orizabas burritos. And they were spicy. And we did a spicy burrito eating challenge. Why don't you guys take Uh, as 
Middle Chief, and nobody knew who Middle Chief was. I was like, oh, oh my god, I saw that. I was like, oh, that was awesome. And I was like, Middle Chief. And everybody was like, so who are you? Oh. <laughs> really, guys? <laughs> you let me down. You yes. let me down, team. They were saying it was the, the Joker. I was like, that's not the Joker. <laughs> This is the Spicy Burrito Challenge. Each team will consist of two contestants, an eater and a feeder. The eater will place his or her arms behind his or her back, while the feeder uses his or her arms to feed their partner. The first eater to eat the contents of his or her burrito will win the challenge. Spitting out the burrito will disqualify a team, and one bottle of water may be requested. Not even our first bite. I don't think she swallowed any of them. <laughs> oh, no. What is this? What is this? Are we pulling food out of our mouth here? <laughs> this one bite. What is going on? Why are you taking bites like normal people? I'm getting anxiety watching this woman eat. Every bite. Gotta keep it in her mouth. She's gotta keep it in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the guy has a mouth. He's done that before. I feel like he's, he's very focused. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. He's like, I'm waiting. He's, he's watching those, like, chili peas fries. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. There you go. You know, that wasn't us, okay? It was her. <laughs> no, no, she's just qualified. Yeah. I feel like this guy's really been watching the competitive eating competition videos that I like to watch. He was born for this moment. I was so determined. I was like, I got this. What about the partners that is like, get in So supportive. They need to shove it in there a little yeah. bit harder. <laughs> what is she doing? Is she tearing off pieces? <laughs> yeah, she's doing she's this stuff cheating. delicately. <laughs> They were so appreciative. They're just like, thank you so much. It's like, no, thank you. It's been really great. I've been back there a couple times. People still talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. It was definitely a memorable <laughs> thing. <laughs> and, yeah. See, there you are. I have some screens and stuff happened after I left. So what happened after oh. I left? Oh, yeah, no? <laughs> 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 we had some drinks that night. We and, did. And we had some fun, and then... Uh, DJ had a lot of fun. I had a bar tab. <laughs> and I just thought that I shouldn't have a bar tab. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I proceeded to tell the bartender that I shouldn't, and that I was a VIP. He's the elite, elite member here today. I don't think I said elite. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you did. But, but then we were going to go somewhere else. Yeah, we were going to go to the bar down the street. Then I realized. My night was over. <laughs> it was time for me to go home. And um, after, after you um, proceeded to yell at the bartender, you decided to close out your tab. And then I left, and then you decided to open another New one. Tab. <laughs> and have have another drink. drink. <laughs> yes, so that was a fun night. <laughs> a really fun night. And have it had so nothing to do with the shots that you two were buying me. Well, we're good friends. <laughs> <laughs> we're good friends. We take well, advantage of the opportunity. You know, I would have had some, but I had to work in the morning, so. 
<laughs> you did? I thought you did. I did, yeah. <laughs> she was good. We work hard, but we play hard too. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was funny to get the. Julie and someone else that was with us put down the <laughs> <laughs> the tablecloth. The tablecloth <sighs> on on the, the stage. stage floor. Yeah. So that it would catch the rice and everything falling out of the burritos or mm -hmm. the one girl's whole burrito. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't even standing on the tablecloth. Everything fell so to it wasn't, the ground. It wasn't a fall after all, you know? Not <laughs> entirely. <laughs> yeah. Not entirely. Because the other two, they pretty much ate a whole burrito, so there was not sure. much rice yeah. spilled. So the, the whole point of the tablecloth was so that we could pick it up, fold it all together, not spill anything, take it outside, and toss the contents. Julie goes to do this, and the hostess of the show says, just dump it out on the stage. Come and sweep it up. <laughs> she says, no, come sweep it up. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it. And the guy comes out of the back with this tiny, it was a toy broom, tiny little broom. One of the brooms where you're just like, why do we have this thing? It, it, it should have gone in the garbage a long time ago. Well, he wasn't very good at sweeping either. Because he didn't have a small brook. No. Oh my goodness. He, he swept around the same eight pieces of rice for about probably 12 minutes before the lady was just like, okay, like, well, you I gotta go on with the show. He was performing and he was still on the stage. He was still on the stage. <laughs> Sweeping around 12 grains of rice, yes. Oh my gosh. I had like anxiety the entire time after, hoping that somebody wouldn't fall. No, you wouldn't take the broom from him and so <laughs> I did. I was like, I'll yeah. do it. I'll take care of it. It's not a problem. I've done this before. I don't think you've done that before. <laughs> you don't think he's ever swept anything in his life. Maybe not no, rice. <laughs> maybe not rice off of the stage, but then again, that would be a first for me also. <laughs> that was fun. Was so fun. <laughs> I'm just glad no one fell. Yeah, I think the hostess said she almost fell, or well, almost I missed it. I, <laughs> so. I, I just know I was back. I was back by the dressing room, and she got off the stage after performing, and she comes running back there, and she said, "I almost fell on that goddamn rice." <laughs> like, oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, that almost happened. <laughs> spicy weed on the mini. Ooh. The spicy burrito. Yeah. We should do a spicy burrito challenge where they have to be able to eat the entire burrito in under five minutes. And it's free. And they get a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> How about you comment at the bottom of this video and you tell us? Do you want a free burrito or do you want a t-shirt? <laughs> if you can eat our spiciest burrito in five that, minutes. The free burrito is the one they're gonna eat or another one? One that they eat, no. Oh, okay. They get that one free. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I took the spicy burrito challenge and all I got was this t-shirt. I think that's what I did. Going with the t-shirt. We're going back to the Martin game. <laughs> At the beginning of this episode, Joanna goes on to discuss how food and eating habits are causing health issues, including disease and obesity. One of her primary points is regarding how fresh food is so much better for you than processed food. This is a shared thought by many dietitians and health experts. Orizaba's is a restaurant that uses fresh ingredients that are prepared on a daily basis from scratch. As Orizaba's employees, how, are you, how do you view the benefit of scratch-made food? So um, working in a restaurant that makes primarily all scratch made food, um, it really gives us all, I feel like, a sense of pride in what we do. And knowing that we get whole chunks of meat, we slice our own steaks, and and uh, we have uh, whole onions and, and, and whole garlic and, and all of these, these whole fresh ingredients that we chop by hand or we dice on a daily basis and we can come in and say that we know what we're serving our guests. We know that what we're making for lunch every day, and we know that what we're putting in our bodies is is healthy. It's good for you. It's natural. It's coming in without those preservatives and those and those you know, terrible things that you get at the grocery store at those fast food chains and things. I think for me, the benefit of scratch-made food is 
is being able to sleep at night knowing that I'm serving our guests and our employees really, really great quality food. Yeah, and, and ourselves too. I mean, I've been working for Salas for six years and I, every day I work, I eat there. Every day. And I know that, that it's good for me. I know what I'm putting in my body. So I know there's no like extra added things uh, because I see how everybody does it. I see the prep, uh, cook, cutting the lettuce, cutting the fajitas, uh, slicing the steak, like the cook, I see him cutting the chicken as we as we sell it. So I know it's fresh and I'm proud to work at a company that does that. So it, when somebody asks me if uh, the food is fresh, it's fresh and it's it it's natural, right? Even, I mean, we try to do like pre-shredded uh, lettuce and it tastes different. It tastes like it has preservatives mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be just lettuce, they put it in a bag so it lasts longer. But it tastes different than the one that we get on the box and we, we shred it there every morning. <clears throat> Whole heads of romaine yes. lettuce that we core and we slice and we take care of ourselves. I had somebody come into the restaurant today and ask me, why does your guacamole taste so different from that other fast casual Mexican chain? Well, honey, they've got halved frozen avocados coming in. So sure, they can say they make their guacamole fresh all day long but they're defrosting that avocado or they're taking it out of that tub or out of that bag and they're squeezing it out for you. No, we peel, we have, we core, we, we mash, we mix our own avocados, our own guacamole fresh twice a day. And it's I mean, the same for everything in the restaurant. Uh, we were given the option of do the frozen um, avocado for the guacamole. I'm like, we'd rather take it off the menu when there's a crisis because there's been a few in the past years then sell something that I wouldn't need it, so I wouldn't sell it. And every single person in the, in the company would agree. Sure, it's gonna take extra time out of your day to make that guacamole, yeah. but we'd rather sell you really great scratch quality food. It, it definitely makes a difference, and it makes a difference on many different levels. There, there's the taste level, there's the nutritional value level, there's mm -hmm. quality and consistency uh, on it. On, every level um there's a guest that goes into one of our restaurants that also used to go to a competitors um who's on a very bland diet because he has some health issues and he has to get specific items and one of them is lettuce and he quit going to our competitor because they got in baked pre-cut lettuce and it messed with him he couldn't he wasn't able to eat it anymore because of his health problems and he is continue to come to Zava's because of the fact that we do have that clean lettuce, that fresh cut, everyday lettuce. Chris, fresh lettuce, yeah. It's nice to be able to serve quality food and, and we're able to maintain that, that discipline with, within our company because we, we scratch make that food every day, we cut it, we don't have freezers, we don't freeze anything. And then we choose to help out the community by taking that food at the end of the night that we did not sell and donating it to various different charities around the community that, that take food to people who are in need or homeless or have a hard time struggling to buy food or get food in other ways. And so it's nice that we're able to take that and not throw away perfectly good food Yes, because there's a lot of food that we used to throw away, like every night. When I first started working at Zavas, I would look around to see, I was like, are we really going to throw away this? I mean, it was perfectly good food, and, mm -hmm. and we did for a long time, but not anymore. Now we, we find a way to, to help the community. Exactly, exactly. We have chicken that might have been cooked at 8.30. We didn't get a customer in the door for half an hour, so now we've got you know a pan or half a pan of chicken that we thought we were going to use. You know, it's not bad, but it's not something that we would serve you the next day. It's not something that we would give our customers. You know, same thing with the rice. The rice is good. We all eat second day rice at home. It's, it's no issue, but it's not something that we would pride ourselves in serving our guests. So it, fortunately now, over the past year, we've had uh, partnerships with different, different uh, charity, charitable organizations. 
and we've been able to donate all of that food at the end of the night. Nothing goes to waste now, not even the burritos that, or the bowls that get made mistakes on the line or, you know, somebody comes down the line and they don't want salsa on their burrito and, you know, now we don't have to throw that away and, you know, now we don't have to look for somebody to give that to. So it's really great. We're really, really be able to have, happy to be able to, to give that gift of quality food, food without preservatives and food without uh, the stress and the worry of where it might have come from. We have to give that back to our community. And we're taking nutritious food, food that's got wholesome vitamins and, and, and real calories, good calories and um, minerals from the vegetables and whatnot to people who need it the most, people who are out in the cold, people who are not being able to eat a full meal every day. Um, and I, I think it's important that they're able to get this kind of quality food with these nutritional values, and, and I'm, I'm proud of us for that. Mm -hmm. This was the first episode of At the Table with Ori Zavis. We're at the table, and this is Ori Zavis. This is Julie, Amber, and I'm DJ, and we thank you for watching us, and we welcome your questions, so go ahead and leave comments in the uh, section below, and we would love to have that dialogue and discussion with you. Until next time, peace out. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>